Looking handsome as ever. Stay hating. Well, maybe you. I don't know about me. What? Uh, There's a whiskey award for looking good on camera. That should be an award. That's that's. <laughs> should what... we talk to Ralphie and Roy? Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Rand Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. Are you muted? No. <laughs> Tonight we're uh, reviewing uh, the newest batch of the Glen Alki 10-year-old batch number nine. Batch nine. These things are coming out faster than any other product in the world. <laughs> they are. They're on batch nine in year four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this just came into our market. Obviously, the UK gets it well before us in Canada. Uh, this one coming in at 58.1% ABV, and it is following the same maturation types as we've had in previous bottlings. The PX, the Oloroso, the Virgin Oak, and the Rioja wine cast. Yeah, uh, that since batch five, so the yep. last four batches. Correct. Um, we're gonna probably bring in batch eight as we're tasting this. Yeah. So we did a video uh, of batch eight a review um, previously, and we said, said um, we really liked it. We yeah. were seeing seeing our praise about that one because we weren't l- really loving batch seven. Um, we thought that it maybe had too much Rioja cask influence in it. And um, that was kind of confirmed. Um, I think I think a Spanish dude's going to jump on the comments and be like, <laughs> Jeremy, stop butchering that word. Is it not Rioja? It's, I think it's Rioja. 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 What is that? What is Rioja. That? What, what is that? Uh, that throw oh, glass Ricola. 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 Yeah. I'm going to put it in right here. Now available in sugar free. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's dating ourselves. That's a, that's an old school commercial. It is. Yeah, I wonder if that was a worldwide thing. I hope so. I think it would. I hope be, everyone right? knows it's, exactly where it's we're from. Like about. Switzerland, so <laughs> you would think, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the uh, nose is pretty good. It's on nice. This. It is nice. It is nice. Yeah. So like I was saying before, sorry, before um, we started talking Rioja. Um, I think Lanaliki realized that they dumped too much of this wine cask into batch seven. And I think maybe yeah. they got a little bit of feedback from the whiskey community yeah. and, um, you know, maybe corrected it, uh, in the right way. I guess that's the benefit of releasing so many batches so frequently is that like they can tinker and swap this for that. And, mm-hmm. you know, more portion of PX or less portion of, you know, Rioja. Yeah. That so kind of thing. on the nose here, I'm getting like, typical Glenalki 10. I'm getting like that really nice chocolate fudge that I love, like those berries, those like uh, plums and figs and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's super similar to the 12 on the nose. Mm. And this has calmed down a bit because I think when we first opened it, it was a bit hot. It seems like yeah. it's calmed down on the nose. I, don't, I haven't tasted it just yet. but Sure, like as most cast strength whiskeys go, on first crack, you know, they're going to be a little bit different than... And you let them sit a couple weeks. That's the one thing I found about that batch eight, though, is that batch eight was easy hop. drinking right off the hop. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's The batch eight is scary because it's only like 1% less than this. Yeah, and it's a pour-and-play whiskey, Yeah, which doesn't happen very often with a cast strength. And I think some insider information from an unknown or a known source, but we won't mention who it was, um, saying that about the same proportions of uh, cast type maturations in this one as batch eight. Yeah. And that's the funny thing about the whiskey world in general is that you can do everything exactly the same and you're still going to get two different whiskeys. You can have two barrels treated the exact same way, distilled on the exact same day, yep, bottled on the exact same day yeah, and taste completely different. Yeah. And we've proven that actually yeah. Cavalan or Cava fan um did a selection of two whiskeys that were uh, barreled on the same day same barrel yep um they were matured right beside each other on the rick house the entire length of their maturation and they were bottled on the exact same day and they tasted different and like very noticeably different as well i think that's what makes this this hobby so fun is that you can never say, oh, yeah, yeah I know exactly what that's going to taste like. Because mm-hmm. you never do. Mm-hmm. You never do. Billy Walker has been making this for 10 batches now. Yeah. Or almost nine. Nine batches now. 
and every single one has been completely different. Yeah. There's not one that I could say is like, yeah, that's ident- identical to that one. Right. They're all like individually, you know, tasting their own way or they have their flaws in their own way and everything yeah. is, you know, so unique. Yeah. I mean, I think we're getting to a point where like they're becoming more consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, batch one is like leagues different than anything else yeah and yeah. two as well batch one and two are way different two is very different three was a huge change from what we've already seen in one and two yeah. and then it started to get a little bit more similar mm-hmm. um but then another big change as a five but how about five eight you think five eight are maybe similar five and eight are very similar right the heat levels are the same as like as in very little mm-hmm. um the quality is there on both of those. Yeah. I wonder if he did anything different. I wonder if there was something, maybe the vatting was a little longer, maybe because they took a little bit more time between uh, four and five and a little bit more time between seven and eight. Mm -hmm. Those ones turned out a bit better. It's crazy to think about like a master blender's job about trying to like match a profile. And like, okay, here's your casks that you're you're pulling from this year. Like, yeah. match it. Like, ooh, that's tough, man. It's it, and heat is one of those things where, you, it's impossible to know how it's going to come out in the bottle, mm-hmm. because when you're doing barrel pulls, and you're like, yeah, today maybe my palate's a little bit warmed up, so that doesn't taste hot to me at all. Yeah. But tomorrow that might be really hot. You got to keep your palate like you can't eat spicy food. Yeah, they can't. Like, say goodbye to that. Say goodbye to candy. Say goodbye to like right? anything that's going to impact your palate in a right, negative yeah. way. You're eating like boiled <laughs> chicken and mashed potatoes the rest yeah. of your life, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah. you do get drink awesome whiskey, so it makes up for yeah, it. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So when I first tried this, when we very first opened it, I was like, oh, maybe there's like a lot of wine cask influence here. But now when I'm trying this, there isn't as much. It's true. It's, um, it's very similar to the eight. Yeah. Just the heat level is dialed up a little bit. It reminds me of of the 12 if the, tw- if the 12 was cast strength that's what this reminds me of okay yeah yeah i don't I, I concur with that statement for sure i mean i think really what we need to focus on is like how's the balance between the casks here right because i think that's what we like or dislike about the batch 10 yeah it's like does one stand out too much the batch seven i think you mean right sorry yeah yeah uh, now we're gonna score this bad boy but i figure since we have the eight here and it's literally 0.9% difference. Yeah. Then that might be the best way to judge this one is comparing it to eight. Cause we both really loved eight. I mean, I am loving this right now. I think it's great. I think it's drinking really well. It's I think drinking it's drinking really a, nice, a, a touch hotter than the eight will, I think, but now's a good time to test that. Uh, I do believe that this one could use a little water and might improve it a bit. I think the viscosity on this is great. Scott City is great. I think it's very, very mouth coating and it's it's very viscous and it's a long finish. Yeah. The eight, they're virtually the same color. I can't really tell the difference. Maybe the eight's a touch darker. Yeah, I mean it's hard to say. Um, yeah, maybe. Let me try to pour a little bit more back into this nine, and see if I can really notice a difference. So, I think what happens after today is we pick the better of the two here Mm -hmm. and compare it to our two favorites, which was the three and the five from the blind tasting that we originally did, Yeah, and then go from there. Okay. I think that'll be the ultimate test to see which one was best in in the first nine batches. Yeah, I'd say the color is very, very similar. I think if you had put a gun to my head, I would say... Slight edge eight, to the eight. The yeah. eight is just a little bit... Slight edge to the eight. But at the end of the day, I don't think that's really telling you much. I mean, no. I don't think that really makes that could real just be, any difference at all. Yeah, it could be more... It could be like, you know, the char was a little heavier in the virgin oak cast yeah. that they... You know, it could be anything. I'm getting a little bit of like, almost like a floral note from both of these, which I don't really know if I picked up in previous tasting you think because the color is dropping a bit they're using a little bit more bourbon cask Mm. and that's what the floral is coming from you mean more virgin oak 
There's no bourbon cask in these? No. Oh, okay. So. I mean. Yeah, I guess it could be the original. I mean, I think they're. I think you can say that the whiskey was matured in ex bourbon cask and then finished in all of these things. Yeah, that eight is just so ridiculously creamy. It's so much less heat than the like we we did that gordon mcphail drink drink off the other day or whatever you know um we had four or five of them and they all drank a little hot they're delicious don't get me wrong yeah they were delicious and same with this batch nine it's delicious but yeah the batch eight does not drink like a cast drank whiskey yeah. at all yeah i mean <laughs> we were both big fans of batch eight i went out and bought four bottles yeah um to stash away it's great value again in canada we source these things for 125 dollars depends 130 sometimes you can grab them on sale like i think bsw has the batch eight on sale right now for like under 100 just under 100 bucks yeah okay so anywhere between like 90 to 120 yeah. the lcbo was like what 130 right LCBO is about 130 to 140. For LCBO yeah. standards, that's, that's yeah. good for this. That's about right. Yeah, man, that batch eight. That batch eight is something special. So, yeah, I am getting just a tad more of that wine cask in the batch nine. Yeah. A little bit more, I think for sure. Not as heavy as I first thought when I had my first try of this one. But now when I'm trying it, it seems like that, that wine cast that I got hit with is kind of more balanced with the rest of them, but still sticks out to me. I would say, like, other than the heat, the flavor profile of the nine might actually be a bit better. But it's just that heat that kind of drags it a little down <clears throat> as far as score goes. The nose on the nine, I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I'm preferring it. I, so I was sipping the eight, went yeah. back to the nine, and really liked that sip of the nine. Yeah. So I, I wonder. This might be a close call. I think initially, batch nine is good. It is. It is a really good batch. I almost miss being new to this. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean by that? Like, if I was, if we were new to the batch nine, and this is the first Glenallachy cast drink that we tasted out of yeah. the, we'd be like oh my god this is amazing yeah but because we're spoiled and we've tried every batch it's it kind of loses its luster a little bit we have to be yeah wait i mean we're, we're taking this as a, a critical analysis of it right yeah yeah that's tough to score both good both really good both really good both really good yep i think honestly the only glenallachy 10 cast strength that's ever come in lower than like an 87 for me is seven batch seven yeah 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 i mean i'm i'm really happy with this batch nine i think it's it's fits in to the rest of the ones that we really liked um i mean i don't know it's hard to say is it beating the batch eight i don't know i it's, think it's there it's within it's got to be within a mark Okay, I'm going to do my final analysis here. I think, I, I think I'm right about the heat thing. I think the eight is a little less hot on the nose and the palate. <clears throat> the nine might have the edge in sweetness. There might be a little bit more sweetness and like rounded flavor profile in the nine. Mm -hmm. One percent difference yeah. or less. Yeah, I think for me, the eight is still the more balanced with all with all four cast types. The nine, a little bit more than that Rihoha cask, um, but still really really nice. It's nowhere near what seven was. No, like seven was no. crazy. You can't go wrong with either of these. Uh, you're gonna love both. Um, I think I still give the slight edge to the eight because of the heat, um, but that's like drawing its straws like it's, yeah the nine is really good i'm and not can, picking up that heat that you are yeah and a drop of water or two brings that right down probably mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. really good are we, we're not going to score both of these i don't even remember what i gave the 88 though or the eight maybe you gave it 88 i probably did i probably yeah. did too 88 or 89 
Um, I think I like the the eight a touch more, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah. So heat wise, there's less on the eight. O overall <laughs> flavor, I just smacked my mic. I hope that doesn't bother you guys too much. Um, overall flavor, I think the nine edges it out. But because of the heat, I probably would go with the eight because of the pour and play like mm -hmm. ability of it. Yeah, and I think um, I think I would probably take the eight over the nine, and I'd probably just score a half point less because I do pick up just a little bit more of that wine cask. I think the eight is just perfectly balanced. I think it's yeah. it's a perfectly balanced whiskey. Yeah. Um. So that's why I give the edge to it. But I would definitely take either of these. Yeah. I think if there's if you're at the if you're at the store and they have a batch eight and a batch nine, I would pick the batch eight first. But yeah. I would be completely fine with a batch nine. Yep. yep. And if there's like a ten to twenty dollar price difference for whatever reason, definitely just grab that one. What's competing with Clanalky, uh ten year old right now? In that price range or in general? In general, like general speaking, what's competing with it? That's a good question. What can you think of? Like I can think of like the Aaron. Mm -hmm. What's that Aaron Bodega cast drink sherry? Yeah. It's, it's NAS a, though. It's a little bit cheaper. It's, it's not an age statement. It used to be it used to be nine years old and okay. then they dropped even the back. Yeah. It used to just say nine years old on the back. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't even do that. Okay. Uh, the, but yeah, that's in the that's in the ballpark. Okay, so there's right? that one. There's the Abalu Arabuna. Right. Which is also NAS. Which is also NAS about the same price. And that drink's hotter than these. That drink's way hotter. That's right. way younger. Yeah. That's got to be like five years old. Really? You think I don't so? Know. It can't be. It can't be. Why would if it was ten years old? It's why not. You... It's not ten. Right. But is it? Is it eight? Is it seven? I think nowadays, if it was eight, well, maybe not because they've established that name. Yeah. It's. It's. You're right. It's. It's in and around that. So what is competing with this then? There's is, nothing. Is there nothing? There's nothing. There's so, the Springbank twelve year old is in the same price range if you can get it. Right, but. And you can't. It's hard, super hard to find. I haven't seen a... When's the last time you saw a Springbank 12-year-old in Canada? Someone asked me if I tried this year's. I'm like, no, I've never seen it. We haven't... I haven't seen it since 2019, I don't think. No, we had 2021. I have a 2021. The 12? Yeah. Okay. Then you're luckier than I am. because I have to, it. want to bring you something? Well, I, <laughs> I thought you I, had it. I'm sure. Maybe I do. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I don't remember... <sighs> I, I could have sworn that I didn't, to be honest with you. But we've been getting the 10. We've been getting the 15. We get everything else. We just, I feel like we haven't gotten the 12 in a long time. I have a 2021 12. I've reviewed it. I'm positive. I think you, we got to check. Why don't you check the channel? Why don't you watch some Super Social Club once I in do, a while? I huh? do. I watch your channel. You're like the only <laughs> channel that I watch. But yeah, you might be right. It, it might be. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. That's That's the most. That that's the most competitive is the Kill Karen Eight. Oh, Kill Karen Eight. Okay. Kill Karen Eight. Another one. And it's yeah. peated. Yeah. Right. So it's not a direct comparison. Okay. But that's probably the most competitive. There's another one. What else is out there? So, <laughs> so there's a fridge down here that was causing all kinds of problems. It's been unplugged for like 24 hours. It sounds like it's taking a piss. And now the it's, freezer is leaking on the floor, and it's, it sounds like it's it's uh, yeah. Just this is laminate. Six right. beers, and it's breaking the seal for the first time. It's laminate, so we're good. But it's making noise. I hope the mic's not picking I it up. I don't think it would. Anyway, um, okay. So what about okay? What about Karen, uh, Glenn Farkless one hundred five? Glenn Farkless. What are we missing? We're missing. Oh, the Ben Romick ten. Cast strength. The ben oh Romick. yes, the Ben Romick the, ten uh, cast strength. Yeah, yeah. 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 which. Again, it's peated. The vintage series one. But right. that's that's a direct comparable. Okay, there's right? that one. Um, that's it. There's not a lot. There's, there's like what? McAllen cash strength doesn't really come close. Uh, Lafroy 10 Sorry, cash saying, strength. Not cash strength, classic cut. Classic cut's yeah. terrible. Um, well, it used to be good. The classic cut used to be good. It was uh, good for two years. The Lafroy 10 cash strength is really good. It's not it's comparable, it, though. It's not comparable because it's so peated and it's all bourbon. I want, like, sherry. There's no, there's no, there's nothing. There's no sherry. There's nothing. This is the top, right? This is at the top of the pyramid of, like, an entry-level cast strength sherry whiskey. Because right? all of Kilhoman's cast strengths are, like, single single cask or small batch or, like, they don't really consistently make. Like, the San Egg, that's not cast strength. That's, I think, 48%. 
Yeah, I'm right? talking like cast strength, yeah. an entry level cast strength, predominantly sherried whiskey. You have the special releases of the Port Charlottes all the time. There's not a lot. There's I, I can't comment down below if you can think of something that we haven't mentioned. Um, but you're right. Like this has got to be the top. Like if if you could choose from everything we just mentioned, are you reaching for this? It's between this, the Benaromic 10, and the Springbank 12, and the Kilcarran 8. Okay. Right? Those yeah. are the ones. And I, I actually really did love that, that Kilcarran 8, the, the 2022. Newest, the one, yeah. I liked it. Really good stuff. I, I crushed that half bottle. I did had. you? Yeah. yeah. You had the 2021? 2021 you had. I have the 2022. Mm, 2022. Oh, you have the 2022. 2022. It's 2022. It is 2022. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, same I have... One, same one you have. I have the 2020. I have all of them. I have all the Kilcarran 12 or 8 cast strings. Mm -hmm. um, I even have the port one. Um, but that that bottle is way more limited than these Glenallachy batches, I'm pretty sure. The Lumreek that, that uh, is a blend that these guys make. You take that? That's very good. Yeah. I love that. That is good. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, Glen Farkless, do they make anything? The 105. The 105. That's what, 60 ABV or something? 60 ABV. It's not that good. It's honestly. not that good. I, I don't like it that much. The Glen Goyne cast ring sucks. Glen Goyne cast ring is terrible. The it's, teapot dram is the one to go Teapot for. dram, but that's, you that's can only super get, limited. yeah, you cannot, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a fair comparison. And it's probably a lot older as well. I like the teapot dram. <clears throat> um, what else? I don't know. Like what? You, you oh, Glendronic makes a cast strength that sucks terrible. as well. I hate Glendronic cast strength. Glendronic never had a good one. No, I've never had a good one. Um, Highland Park cast strength. Nope. That is terrible. It's, it's not like, even that sherried. It's it'll burn your face off. The single casks maybe are comparable, but those are a little young good. too. Sometimes they can be, but they're the most. Uh, they're more like they're mostly thirteen years. We've old had a couple time. good ones. Yeah. We have. Yeah. The single casks are good. Yeah. But that's not a fair comparison. They're single casks. Single casks and more rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, I can't really think of anything else. Yeah. We've gone through it all. In the, oh, I guess if you want to go Irish, you can go Red Breast 12 cast strength. That's a fair comparison. It's about 90 bucks to Red 100 bucks. Red Breast 12 cast strength. Right? It's not that sherried. Yeah. It's very Irish profile. Yeah. But it's good, and it's, it's good. for the price. It's very good. Yeah, it's got all the Rosso matured stuff in yeah. it. Yeah, it's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's the the. I mean, unless you want to start going like across the world, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think where else. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the Glenallachy is going to be pretty close to the top as far as we would consider um in this category of whiskey mm -hmm. i mean i think you can't go wrong with these so what's your score a half tick less than you scored the eight i don't remember what i scored the eight but before you say anything i'll put the scores here of what we said the eight was i'll go first batch eight 88 out of 100 yeah i i'm i'm right there with you i'm 88 as well i was thinking 88 so you want to say you want to go higher than that score or lower than that score? Well, well I same. just I just took another sip of the nine. It's delicious. Yeah, like it's really good. I I hear what you're saying about the Rioja cask being maybe a little bit more present, but I'm not sure if that's Rioja cask. That's mm. that's like making it taste like that. Yeah, it does taste different though. It's very different than the eight. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. See, like to me, <clears throat> the Rioja cask comes out like um like cherry powdered kool-aid that's like, like the note i get so i i was what i will say is the you you might be right because it's more drying mm -hmm. on the finish mm -hmm. so because it's more drying on the finish i feel like that's a wine associated feeling yeah uh so maybe you're right that it's a little bit yeah. maybe the just more dominant mm -hmm. real hot cask even if the portions are the same yeah um but yeah, and the the extra influence of that is not necessarily taking away from it like no. it did with the seven. Right, the seven exactly. it, it was it was way overpowering. This one it's more it's it's ramped up in my opinion, but it's not so much that it's it's throwing everything else. I just notice it more than the eight. I wonder if it's just a more first fill 
sherry influence in the eight. Mm -hmm. Right? There's maybe there's just more first fill sherry in the Could eight. Could just be yeah, more percentage of like PX or something, right? Like PX or that. If you put a that. lot of PX first fill in there, it's gonna it's gonna ramp that profile up more. I I think I give the edge to the eight. So whatever I scored the eight, I'm gonna say that I probably scored the eight like an eighty eight new scoring. Mm -hmm. that's how much i like it yeah right so uh maybe an 87 and a half so i would say that this is an 87 okay yeah and i'm the exact same i'm a half point less than whenever i scored this i think i probably scored it either i either scored 88 eight and a half or 89 and anyways i'm i'm a half point less but i would take it i would take the nine for sure yeah the nine's great yeah it is good we've only i mean it's a it's a pretty cool track record for these because the only ones that i would say i didn't love are the six and seven yeah the six wasn't that great either right right but these were, have been a fantastic redemption and the ones that were previous to the six were incredible so mm -hmm. yeah so out of the nine we would take seven of the nine um, those are good day of the week that's that's a good percentage mm -hmm. right so when we say like the other ones like that's a we have a high standard for these well that's a, like and that's another thing that i wonder we just listed a whole bunch of cast strength if we put those all in a blind mm -hmm. with the seven and the six i bet you the seven and the six still come on top mm. you know what i mean i think it would be i think batch seven and batch six the ones we didn't like most about the glenal key 10 yeah that would probably beat classic cut it would beat highland park it would be Glen Farkless. Yep. It would be Glen Goyne. Glen Goyne. Yeah. Glendronic. Yeah. All of them. Um, it would be all those. Yeah. All those ones. Yeah. Maybe the one that would come the closest, I think, and it's probably one of the younger ones. Ah, maybe not the younger one, but Aaron. The Aaron Sherry Bodega is really good. That's a good one. Yeah. That is a really good one. Despite being no age statement, that's a really good one. Yeah. But that's it. Yep. So I think, I think that's probably Aaron in the last few years has been the most competitive toward Glen Alki, in my opinion. Yeah. Even their other like releases, their mm -hmm. 18 is phenomenal all the time. Yes. The 10 is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they're, yeah. they're doing a great job. Yeah. So I think, and their 21 is more easily accessible. Yeah. So because of that, like, you know, Aaron's, Aaron's competing. Maybe they're not at the level of Glen Alki, Mm -hmm. But they're competing. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I've heard people say that they like this Glenalicky 10 batch 9 more than the 8. Yeah? Yeah, I've heard people say that. I remember um, our friend uh, Whiskey Explorer. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked us to name, like, hey, what's your, like, go, what's your favorite whiskey so far in 2023? Right. And yes. I'm like, oh, batch 8 is, is my favorite one yeah. so far. Like, kind of pick, like, an accessible whiskey. Yeah. And someone in the comments was like, wait till you see batch 9 that's right i remember seeing right. that actually yeah, yeah he was so, like he's like batch eight's great but batch nine is like where i'm at yeah and i could see why because there's elements of there's like a, a classic glenallachy note in this nine that i love mm -hmm. that minerality like it's really like amped up here yeah um but i mean when when judging a whiskey for what it is like as much as this is more glenallachy characteristic this is a like an easier drinking dram yeah. for me so uh, i am using that as a comparable i'm maybe that's not entirely fair maybe that score is higher for me and not necessarily higher for you it, yeah. all these factors like uh, mm -hmm. i think um roy did a recycled review what was it today or yesterday or i don't know he released it anyway um and he mentions scoring and it's funny because you hear how much I criticize my own scoring because I like I, I I believe it's just like you know pull the trigger however you feel that day and that's that's kind of what it is. Yeah. But I feel like his scoring system is actually the best because he drinks it from start to finish. Yeah. And then gives a full review over his experience with that bottle. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. The only problem is you got to try to remember everything about that bottle. Yeah. The whole journey. True. Which is tough. Which is tough. Unless you're writing it all down. Yeah. And like, you know, he's doing these recycled reviews and like y you could spend three years drinking a bottle down. Yeah. Well, you know, of course. Yeah, like, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it exactly. takes a long time. To, like, unless you're like really loving it and you're going to it a lot or you're sharing it a lot. Well, that's the thing. Maybe Roy does a lot of like I'm, friend tastings and yeah, stuff like that. I'm sure he does. Right. right? In order to, to get through all those. For sure. He's <clears> not the only one taking those bottles down. 
Yeah, I don't think so. Right. Because, like, there's times where he has, like, he had two Kill Karen 16s yeah. that he recycled in this most recent one. So mm-hmm. it's like, there's no way he finished both of those by himself. Right. And, and he does share a lot, so we know that. And, like, can you even think of a bottle that you've personally taken all the way down by yourself? It's no, like because I've happens. always poured for friends exactly. and stuff. I've always done right? that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you always uh, share. Like, you know, I'm pouring samples. For just like my buddy at work, we, we swap samples all the time. Right? There you go. So it's like I'm never just always drinking it. Yeah. Yeah, there's very few. If I don't, I don't think I've gone through a single bottle in my life that I, I didn't I, share some. I don't think so either. Right? Like that I didn't share right? some of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so. think so either. Maybe a bottle of like uh bourbon that i'm mixing in an old-fashioned that i'm only that's the only i'm only the one drinking it maybe yeah maybe i mean for me no because like the only stuff that i'm mixing in mixed drinks is like gin tequila that kind of stuff and i share with my wife or you know so it's it rarely ever happens leave us a comment down below gladly 10 cash strength do you have a favorite batch uh if you tried batch nine and if you have where does it rank for you in the batches um so i think know. the next blind tasting is three five eight and nine yeah that's that'd the be next interesting one. yeah that'd be very interesting see what happens yeah that's the best way yeah let's well, do it for us uh give us a comment down below like the video subscribe to our channels if you haven't already and uh we'll see you next time guys thanks so much for watching cheers cheers <laughs>